once upon a time in a vibrant African village where the colors of nature danced in harmony with the beating of drums and joyful laughter. Here lived a young girl called Amara. Amara was known not only as the breadwinner of her family, but also as a beacon of light and resilience. With each sunrise, Amara will wake up, her spirit ablaze with determination. She took on the responsibility of providing for her aged parents and younger siblings and aunt. For she possessed a heart that overflowed with love and strength that knew no bounds. Amara each day toiled and sweated for her family by going into the fields to work on the farm, planting seeds and nurturing them to fruitfulness. Each day, after working on the farms, she would look for fruits and vegetables to bring back home to her family. She was 19 and attractive. But that never got into her head. All she thought about was her aged parents, younger siblings and aunt. She loved her family so much that she never thought about herself. As the seasons turned, the crops she had labored flourished. Her family would gather, their faces reflecting the warmth of her love as they shared meals prepared from that which she had planted at the farm. Amara sat swelled with pride and contentment, knowing that her efforts sustained and kept alive her loved ones. But amidst all the daily toils and hard work in Amara's life, a longing stirred within her. She yearned for a love that would complement her, the love of her good husband that would share the weight of her burdens someday. She believed that the right partner will not only stand by her side, but will also walk alongside her in the journey of life. But as the years progressed, Amara turned into 23 years. No man came to seek for her hand in marriage. She was now feeling she would never get married again in life because she was getting older. All her enemies in the village were now married. She was still toiling and sweating with hard work for her family. Little did Amara know that her aged aunt that she was taking care of and lived with them in the house was turning the men that were coming for her away from her. Each time they came, she would make sure she was the first person they met. She would then tell them that Amara was already betrothed to someone else and they would all go. Her aunt often felt that if Amara ever got married, they would all starve to death because there was no other one to help them. There was no one to help all of them out except Amara. And she felt that it was only Amara that could do that. So she made sure to prevent her from marrying any man. She needed to stay at home to look after us, she often thought. If she goes away, who will then do the walking? No one else can do. The siblings are lazy. Who will then help us hungry with kill us? But life is not that way. You may be prevented from getting what is supposed to be yours early in life. But when the time comes, nature will bypass the evil doer and favor you with what is supposed to be yours. One fateful day, Mara was tending to her farm 
She noticed a stranger standing on the outskirts of the village where a large farm was located, staring at her. His name was Omini, and he looked like a traveler who did not live within the village. When he noticed Amara had seen him, he walked towards her and greeted her with respect. Good afternoon, young lady, he greeted, smiling at her. Good afternoon, sir, answered Amara respectfully. Are you Amara? he asked politely. My name is Omini. Yes, sir, I am Amara, she replied shyly. But who are you and how did you come to know my name, sir? She asked in surprise. I came with my family to your house sometime last year to seek for your hand in marriage. But your aunt told us you were already betrothed to someone. And I was just wondering how a man could just leave his betrothed one to be toiling day and night the way you are doing, he said, shaking his head sadly. Why is he all there out in the world and allowing you to do this, Amara? What are you saying, sir? asked Amara in shock. I'm not betrothed to anyone. What? Omini exclaimed. I don't understand. Me too, replied Amara, staring at him in astonishment. Your age on told us you are betrothed. That you're already taken, he said. But I'm not betrothed to anyone, she said lamely. Why will my aunt say that? She asked with in wonder. He down on her that men have been coming to seek for a hand in marriage, but her aunt must have been scaring them away. But why? she thought. Because if this man had not come here now, I wouldn't have known. Something must be wrong, she was thinking within her. Amara no Mini spoke at length and it down on her that she was the breadwinner of the family and that was why the aunt had been scaring them away. Hmm. So that she would continue to work for them all, all her life. But why, she cried with him, why aunt, I love you. And we continue to love you all. A breadwinner has a life to live too, aunt. She cried within. Ah, unexpected things were crossing her mind. At last, Omini told her he was going back home, but he would come with his mother to marry her if she was still willing to get married. He thanked his personal God for passing through that road at the time Amara was there. He had gone to visit a friend in the next village and was on his way back when he saw her walking and had stood there, wondering and admiring her elegance. At last, Omini came forward to Amara's house and Amara's aunt was about sending him away again. I told you, my niece is already betrothed to someone, she said to Omini. Just then, Amara, who had been told they were coming, came out and confronted her aunt. As they were talking, her parents also came out, and the neighbors, on hearing it, came out too, to join and blame her aunt for doing that. That's selfishness, aunt. That's selfishness. Her aunt apologized and told her she had done it out of selfishness. She begged for forgiveness, that they love Amara, and they didn't want her to go away. Oh, that's pure wickedness. She's a girl and she has a life to live. Amara and Omini got married and Omini took her away from the village to the city where he lived. It turned out that Omini was very wealthy and he loved and cherished Amara so much that she was very grateful to her. Kreto for giving her such a husband. It did not stop there. He also took care of Amara's family in the village and all her aunt was trying to do became a thing of shame to her because she was, she was not left to suffer. She never lacked. Her parents never lacked and the siblings. 
But when Amara had left, all of them woke up and the other siblings became stronger. All our suffering, toiling and hard work in life did not go in vain. She lived to enjoy the fruits of her labor because she did it all with love. So when you are suffering for your family, it's not going to be in vain. You will surely reap the fruits of your labor. That's it. In this life, we shall live to enjoy the fruits of our labor by the grace of our Creator. That's the end of the story. Please subscribe and make sure you press the notification bell. Otherwise, you will not be getting my videos each time I release a new one. Thanks for watching.